Hey guys, this is Nate with Bleepin' Jeep. Today we're gonna do a diesel compression test. If you've already done a gas compression test, well then you're gonna find that this is extremely similar. The only real difference is the gauge goes to quite a bit higher PSI, and then the adapters are different. We don't have spark plugs, so there's no spark plug hole to thread your uh, gauge into. So, this is a small kit. You can get big kits that have just a ton of adapters, but this is all all I need for the kind of stuff that I work on. This would be if you're going to use the injector hole. So you would uh, thread the, you'd pull out one of your injectors, thread this into the hole, and then you can do a compression test that way. What we're going to do is we're going to use one of these adapters that threads into the glow plug hole. So I'm going to grab the glow plug. We'll see which one matches up the closest, and we'll start threading it into the engine. So here's the, one of the glow plugs I pulled out, and here is two adapters that you put together for this kit. Um, this adapter matches almost perfect with that glow plug and then uh, there's a couple of these different sizes that go into the back side of it so you just thread those together and then this will plug right into the back of our gauge we have the adapter threaded into the glow plug hole and then it's like a quick release that goes onto the back of the adapter which then goes up to our gauge so now I'm gonna try and I gotta jump start this engine because I don't have anything hooked up other than I do have a starter solenoid but I don't have anything going to the ignition at all so I'm gonna jump the solenoid <clears throat> and then I'm gonna try at the same time to focus on this gauge so uh, we can see exactly what's going on now I have all the glow plugs out it makes it a lot easier to crank the engine over because there's no compression except for the one cylinder we're testing so let's get started Up of that starter. It's the kind of stuff you discover when you're doing a brand new project. Now write the results of the first cylinder you test down on a piece of paper and then what you do is every cylinder you test you just keep writing down your numbers. This gauge is really broad. It's in increments of 20. I think it was increments of 20. Let's see here. Um, yes, this gauge is in increments of 20. So I put ish on the paper because I know it's like 320-ish. I can't tell if it's 323 or 321. But it's going to be close enough for the purposes that we're using it for. So let's do the next cylinder. It looks like this one's just slightly higher, maybe 10 PSI or so, nothing that's really a big difference. So now we are going to push this little button here. Ooh, maybe. Let the pressure out and go right down our results. So I continued with the other three cylinders in the exact same method I showed you in the first two. You just hook these adapters up and uh, you go from there. It's pretty straightforward, really simple. This is basically like a check valve that only lets pressure go one way. And then uh, you release the pressure when you're done and change cylinders. So you do that five times, you get some numbers. Our numbers in this case are really good. Um, you don't want a really big deviation. The deviation here is, I mean, it's super small. I mean, it was small enough that I could barely even, like I said, this gauge doesn't even like give you, you know, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, cause it, it would have to be huge in order to get to a thousand PSI. So. 
this deviation is extremely small. If we had one cylinder that was really low, then I'd be concerned. But this came out of a running car. Um, I didn't get to run it for very long when I got the car, it was totaled. Um, but I did get to run it and here it sounded pretty good. So these numbers don't surprise me a bit, but if they were low, then I would know, okay, well moving forward, I can use this engine for now, but I might need to look at a long-term plan on, uh, you know, why the cylinder pressure is low in one or all cylinders. So it could mean a rebuild. I mean, in this case, everything's really good. So, which is great. It's great for me. It means I'm not trying to locate another motor. Oh yeah, you can see these diesel-y hands. I can't even drive by a diesel truck or car without looking like this. So let's talk about our compression tester. This is a Pittsburgh, which anybody of anybody else besides me shops at Harbor Freight, you're very familiar with this brand. <laughs> I would say that for the money, it's pretty dang good. There is one thing that I fought the entire time, and that is this did not want to stay connected to the adapters. I mean, I kept having a fight. I even put a little bit of uh, oil in there just to like lube it up, hoping it would break in. Um, so, you know, it, if you want to get a higher quality one, you're going to pay a higher price. To me, it wasn't that big of an inconvenience. I don't own a shop. So I'm not gonna be using a tester like this all the time. Uh, if, if I did own a shop and I was gonna be using a, te a tester all the time, I would probably save up for a better one. But in this instance, it worked great. It did exactly what I needed it to. And you know, a year from now, if I need to do another one, I'll deal with the uh, poor connection. So you're off the hook this time, Harbor Freight. I hope the video helps you out if you're unfamiliar with how to do this test. Uh, my results were good, I hope yours are too. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel, like the video, follow us on social media. I'm uh, Bleepin' Jeep Nate on Instagram, and thanks for watching.